I want to talk to you about the attributes of highly successful physics students. Because I know that you want to go where these have gone, right? By way of introduction, I want to talk about uh, the fact that our country needs you. The recent data shows that there aren't enough students who are entering the STEM disciplines, and that is more true for the physics area. So our country needs you. Uh, the background also also shows that there are a number of students who identify themselves as wanting to enter the STEM disciplines. However, they matriculate for a few years in the college college uh, undergraduate level. They say they're going to go into the master's and PhD level, but they never do that. So I think I see a group of students here who want to persist. Am I right? I'm going to tell you now some of the habits of those who have succeeded in this field. And I want to end with the attributes of the successful physics uh, student. Every now and then, you come across um, a writing that can have a profound impact on you. And for me, that was when I read this book by Stephen Colbert. Who's read this book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Okay, great. Similar. 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 I'm sorry. It's a similar book. Okay, similar. All right. This book, is, uh, I'm going to give you a quick a synopsis of this because what you will discover is it is your habits, your skills, your knowledge, your desire that will take you to where you want to be. I'm going to briefly list the, uh, the seven habits. What I want to do with this is just take this down and use it to talk to you about the attributes, the habits that you need to have if you're going to be successful. Again, I will uh, mention to you later on what is happening even as I study the, uh, the statistics, especially in the HBCUs, especially among the STEM disciplines, what is happening. So we want to be able to identify what it takes to be successful. Either of your areas of business is what, is what it takes to be successful. So the seven habits move through, pull us through the following stages, the dependence, beginning with dependence. Most of us are born, we're dependent, right? We, we, we rely upon our parents, those who take care of us. So I'm thinking I'm seeing before me now, those who are moving from being dependent to being what? Independent, making your own decisions. Then we're gonna move into interdependence. And I think Dr. Um, Bartram mentioned that one of the one of the skills you want to uh, acquire is you have to work well with others, to be interdependent. So the first three habits around moving from dependence to independence is called self-mastery. Habit number one, be proactive. Take initiative in life by realizing that your decisions are the primary determining factor for effectiveness in your life. You, you'll be surprised how even at the graduate level, I meet students who do not take what ownership of, ownership of their own decisions. Now, I see you're here today, so I know that you have decided to move further. You decided to come here and do this, what, REU program, right? Okay, and you put that choice yourself. Begin with the end in mind. Self-discover and clarify your deeply important character, values, and your life goals. Have you identified your life goals? I sent that question to you, and I asked you to respond to tell me what are your specific goals right now? short term or long term because it's very important a lot of the decisions you will make will be that you need to make will be based on how you have decided right now where you want to be and one section of this book talked about you need to visualize yourself in your total career see yourself 10 years from now see yourself 20 years from now see yourself 30 years from now and see yourself dead <laughs> why did i say that because it will be then that people will say what you contributed, either your family, your friends, your, your, your professional career, right? So you want to be able to visualize, even at this stage, what you want to be known about you. And then you'll make day-to-day -day decisions that will lead you to that path. 
Again, this is uh, what I was meaning. Uh, I said that this is to clarify what you're going to do. Uh, it says plan, prioritize, and execute your week's task based on importance rather than urgency. We're going to talk about this a little bit more as well. Well, can you go a little bit in depth with uh, saying based on importance rather than urgency? Isn't that kind of the same thing? I mean, Not exactly. What he wants you to see here is that a lot, oftentimes we find ourselves doing the urgent. I mean, I got to do it right now. That right. means you didn't plan it. You didn't prioritize it. And I'll, I'll show you when it comes to studying how um, many students do not plan their day, which involves time for study, where they cram at the end. Yeah, feel free to stop. Feel free to stop me and interject at any point. say that as a student who sometimes does that myself, it's not because we don't know that's not the way you should say it. It's just because something happens or you're lazy. So okay, are you lazy? Okay. <laughs> so now Tell them it's not to do it yourself. <laughs> okay, so you you admit that you're sometimes lazy. Of course. All sometimes lazy. But you're not lazy all the time. Of course. <laughs> Okay, the next three have to do with uh, interdependence, working with others, and think win-win. I'm going to talk, tell you briefly about a student who's not in here. He told me that he had gone to a fellow student looking for some assistance, and the fellow student said that he would not help him. And as a result, each time he came to this path, he would move away and wouldn't help him. And I thought, that's not how we want you to be trained. We want you to learn to help one another. That it's important that you grow. You actually grow as a group and as an individual, as individuals, when you learn to depend on each other and to, to work well together. Because if I win, you win. You believe that? You say we don't have to be competitive. We do not have to be competitive. Not this stuff, especially. And then you're going to find out later on. Now, of course, you're going to have some company. But don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're going to share everything, all of your nuggets. No, I'm not saying that. But you will find that in a win-win situation, you come out on top. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. This involves listening so that once you have been listened to, you can influence others and they will listen to you as well. I'm going to talk about this, this is more uh, also uh, later. Synergize. Combine the strengths of people through positive teamwork so as to achieve goals no one person could have done alone. This is important also, and again, I want to elaborate on the fact that the teamwork, the positive teamwork is a very important habit that you want to cultivate at this stage. So it's just a natural habit when you could advance in your career. And the last one is called sharpen the saw, balance and renew your resources, your energy, your health, one of the areas also I'm finding, I'm, I'm, I'm even observing, that many college students forget the importance of maintaining that, their vitality through good exercise, good, through good eating, good eating habits. It's amazing. Who heard, who heard of the freshman 15? Okay, what does that, what does that mean? Sophomore 30. Sophomore 30. What else? What else? What else? Okay, in order to in order in order to sharpen the saw, in order to, to uh, be able to retain the uh, the uh, stamina that we need for a long term effective a, a long term effective lifestyle, we've got to remember that these things are also important, very important. So now I'm gonna move to the attributes of highly successful physics students. Number one, the student takes full control of his or her college career. When I say take full control, what comes to your mind? Applying for internships. Applying for internships. Okay. Getting good grades. What else? Applying for funding. Finding funding. Making connections. Making connections. Being proactive in class choices. Being proactive in what, what do you mean by that? A lot of the times, uh, me personally, my first couple of years, I just went off whatever my advisor told me to take. You know, a lot of high pressure situations that I didn't perform well. And if I had been proactive in my class choices, I think I would have been paying about 
kind of like Ed and I did the same thing. Uh, I allowed uh, you know, my advisor to choose my classes for me. And uh, when I wasn't, I mean, it got me to see what I was happy with. And I don't exactly see it, so I choose to retake the class even if my advisor makes it just like you. Know. Okay. So you take full control of your own college Take control now, but then the steps that are taken, you can be responsible for what happens for the outcome. Explores the many opportunities made available as a physics major. What, is, what do I mean by that? Right here. Visit some of the physics society websites and options they have as far as education and research. Okay, great. Designs a roadmap that will lead to his or her desired destination. Again, you gotta execute a plan. You gotta decide probably as the you when I said decide, I'm saying you have both long range and short term goals. You gotta decide each step of the way where you want to be and are you making the necessary steps to achieve that that goal. And finally, lives well and strives to make his or her his or her own unique contribution to society. The first uh, set of pictures, we may not be become Nobel laureates, but we can each make our own unique contribution to society. Oh, we could become Nobel laureates. Oh, we could become Nobel laureates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, I like that. So, I'm not just this here, I want you to talk about these. You know and you practice the seven habits of the successful college student. How many of you skip class? Uh, one of those mornings where it's like real early and you know, it's there a lot of excuse class. So take control. What does that mean? You know, if you're not scheduled at 8 o'clock classes, or if you do schedule, take control of that. Okay? <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. I'm saying if you can schedule around it, you don't do it. You know, no, I, no, I, I, I one time made a sort of a to see that the students would take 8 o'clock class okay. and the students the same course started about 3 o'clock. The grade level of 8 o'clock class was higher. Okay. Why do you think so? It's a very serious thing for my family. Exactly. Okay, sit in the front of the class and okay, what about that one? I'll sit in the front of all my class. I don't I don't let anybody sit in the front of the class. So what has been the advantage of that? No distractions. distractions. The teacher sees you have some kind of question. You have good eye contact, have good interaction. You listen even better. So I encourage that those who can raise their hand on that one. Um, has mastered the art of listening. You know, some people take for granted that they just all know how to listen. We assume that we all know how to listen. But listening is an art that has to be mastered. Who can tell me some of the techniques of good listening? Okay, takes good notes. Hello, 